Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. Today we're looking at the world's best car soccer simulator, Rocket League. Okay, well maybe it doesn't have a ton of competition in that category other than its predecessor, supersonic acrobatic rocket powered battle cars, but it's still pretty phenomenal. Equal parts demolition derby and soccer match, Rocket League pits teams of cars against each other in an effort to launch a giant ball into a net. Unlike in soccer, or any other sport really, in Rocket League there are no holds barred. Not only can you repeatedly crash into your opponents until they literally explode, but if things get too dicey you can take to the skies thanks to your car's built-in rocket engine. Oh hey, I understand the title now. Now it's hard to get a sense of scale when playing Rocket League. Are these real car-sized vehicles or are they RC cars? And is this some sort of bizarro Pixar world where the cars themselves are sentient? I mean, it doesn't look like anyone's driving. These questions remain unanswered, with the developers at Psyonix keeping mum about the game world. Just a heads up, we're going to operate under the assumption that these are full-size cars playing dangerous jet engine soccer with a giant ball. Seems more fun that way. Regardless, there's a lot to unpack in the way these cars move, fly, and crash, so let's unpack. These aren't just super sturdy cars that can take a lot of damage and sort of drive on the ceiling. These things can fly. Maybe not super well, but well enough to create plenty of did-you-see-that replay moments. Jet propulsion, as seen in Rocket League, happens when matter in a rocket or jet engine is ignited and the expanding gas is pointed out the back, creating forward momentum. And voila, we have liftoff. Jet engines mix outside air with fuel to combust it, but rockets have to bring all their fuel along in liquid form because there's not enough air at high altitudes or in space. Rocket League games don't take place in deep space, or do they? But the game isn't called Jet League, so let's assume they're using rockets. Since they have to store everything they need to combust on board, there's probably not a ton of room in these cars to store fuel, especially considering that, along with the giant rocket in the back, there are smaller rockets around the car to help you jump and steer while in the air. So the field is littered with pickup points that allow you to refuel on the go. Pick up enough fuel and you can run your boosters for long enough to hear a loud boom as you gain even more speed. Maybe this is suggesting you're breaking the sound barrier, but that's nah, not likely. There's no actual speedometer on your screen as you play, but the game will tell you how fast your ball was traveling when it goes in. After fiddling around a bit in free play, I found that I could hit the ball in at the same top speed as my car, which the game reported as 96 kilometers per hour. So the rockets are a little underfed and we're nowhere near touching the speed of sound, which travels 12 times faster. Really the boom is the game's way of telling you that you've just turned into a death missile. Not only for the cars that were silly enough to pick the orange team, but in real life, probably for yourself as well. I timed how long it took my little car to go from zero to its top speed of 96 kph, and the result was 1.51 seconds. That means I'm accelerating at a rate of 17.6 meters per second squared. Earth's gravity accelerates you towards its surface at 9.8 meters per second squared, so my car accelerates at almost 1.8 times the rate of Earth's gravity, or what we call G's, and that's just in a straight line. NASCAR racers face 2 to 3 G's per turn, so it's a safe assumption that Rocket League drivers face that and more as they cut sharp turns and barrel roll. Rocketing up the side of the wall and onto the ceiling would be somewhere between NASCAR and piloting a fighter jet, which can weigh down pilots with up to 9 G's. You or I would probably pass out around that point, but pilots are physically fit and wear special G-suits with inflatable air bladders to force blood out of their legs and into their brains to keep that from happening. So if you're going to drive a Rocket League car one day, you should probably bulk up in the gym. Or centrifuge. You wouldn't want to pass out of the wheel because of another major component of Rocket League, the crashes. It's not the speed that kills you, but suddenly becoming stationary. Newton's first law states that a body in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force, what you've probably heard referred to as inertia. If you're driving a rocket-powered car at 96 kilometers an hour and the car comes to a sudden stop, your body is going to try to continue moving at 96 kilometers an hour. Now, in a normal car, things like seat belts and airbags are there to try and influence your momentum, but an airbag is a one-shot deal. Once it goes off, it won't protect you again. Not that that would matter, because your car would look more like an accordion and you couldn't drive it anyway. But somehow, despite taking repeated beatings, these cars keep on running just fine. This lack of a so-called crumple zone is actually very problematic. When vehicles collide, they release a ton of energy. If that energy has nowhere else to go, the occupants of the vehicle are going to absorb it. Crumple zones manage crash energy by absorbing it in the exterior parts of the car, keeping it away from your fragile body. Formula One cars keep drivers safe in crashes because the driver's survival cell stays rigid while the rest of the car deforms and disintegrates. Because of this engineering, drivers have survived crashes in F1 cars that subjected their bodies to 28 Gs. Rocket League cars apparently aren't designed with driver safety in mind, so you're taking the full force of every crash, from the lightest fender bender to... Yeah, well, yeah, sometimes the cars just explode. 
Because of the flying and the crashing and the exploding, Rocket League may be fun to watch and play, but I wouldn't sign up if they strapped rockets to a real-life car and asked for volunteers. Thanks for watching this episode of Play Noggin. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for topics or games to cover, leave us a comment down below. Check out our other videos here, and don't forget to keep on playing.